Don't get woke, Emily. <laughs> you got spindle slime on your upper lip. I know. <laughs> It's a little bit different boat than what he had last time, isn't it, Houston? Yeah. A little bit bigger. Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh. Hello. another video before we get started go down there subscribe ring the notification bell and like this video so today we are fishing for spoonbill what's that noise man sounds like you got a fish back there already Houston that's right we're back here in northeast oklahoma we're snagging for paddlefish we may catch some crappie later some sand bass i don't know what all we're gonna do hopefully the spoonbill are here and we can catch some of those big prehistoric dinosaur looking fish huh Houston mm -hmm. so Houston and I came up last time Emily did not get to come with us but we're back with the same guide his name's Tommy he's got a he's got a guide service I'll leave a link on Facebook I'm sorry if the wind's terrible but it's T McDee's guide service he bought a new boat this year if you can't tell it's uh much larger than what we fished with before in the past and it has an enclosed cab and we can get in out of the wind they're right, Houston. Yeah. So we're snagging for these paddlefish. We're not actually, they're not, they're not uh, gonna hit a lure. Paddlefish are filter feeders. So you're not gonna be able to use any kind of bait to really catch them. So we, he's running some big treble hooks and we're gonna troll and see if we can snag a few and catch a fish bigger than Houston. No, not bigger. Bigger than yeah. Emily. Yeah. Yes. That one. A shark right there. Huh? A shark right there. Okay. Uh-uh. -oh. He didn't have a bill. Gotta be a shark. Hey, it's shark. <laughs> Job, Emily. That was awesome. You got a banded fish. <laughs> Where are you going? Why'd you take it, off? It, it hit me. It hit me. Yeah. I was trying to hit us all. Oh my god. <laughs> what do you think, Emily? That's awesome. You caught a banded spoonbill. I know. What do you think you weighs? About oh. 300 pounds? I mean, That's what it feels like right now, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Are you gonna let oh, it go? I think it's real. 
We can look up the band number. So I've been coming up here for several years and I've never caught or even seen a banded spoonbill like that. The, the wildlife department puts those bands in them so they can track them and see where they go when people catch them. You're allowed to, to actually keep those fish. You can't remove the band and release the fish. No. But yeah. you can harvest the fish, keep the band. Um, but we went ahead and released it so somebody else can catch it and then they can track it. But we can actually go to the website, pull up the information and see where that fish was released or where, where, where he was banded at. And then I'm assuming we can put our information in there so they can track that in the future. So if anybody else ever catches that fish, they'll know that Emily Arms caught that fish here where we're at today. So it's a pretty cool deal. Maybe one of y'all come down here watch and, and y'all could watch catch it. Yeah. You think so? Here's Maybe. Cow for Maybe. Whenever you're done. That'd be you're cool. Welcome. Emily looks like she's throwing up overboard over here. There's like skin stuck to my skin. <laughs> Hey, they're dirty, they're dirty, slimy fish, but that's just part of it. Why don't you get upgraded to driver here? I've been driver. So here's what we're looking for: the big, the big white dots on there are spoonbill. That's what we're after. You can see them a little different on this view. But they're down about 35 feet of water. They're about 30 feet. All right, Emily. You were driving when you hooked up the last fish, so I, know. I expect another banded spoonbill real soon. Okay. I don't know what I expect from you. Clean windows, I guess. In the holder. Go, 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 go. Go, Houston. Come on, don't look. No, not the string, just the, just reel. Hey, watch your hand there, buddy. You're going to pinch your fingers. Yeah. Just, yeah, right there. <laughs> oh my God. There you it feels like a big one. Does it? <laughs> I might have to get you a little step stool. <laughs> hey, you want me to put it in reverse for you a little bit? Yeah. You start reeling. Start reeling. Reel, reel, reel. You need some help. Reel. Keep reel. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Don't get that flat. Reel. <laughs> hey, don't let go of that pull. Ah, he's just coming with the big fish again. Good job. What's the matter, buddy? I almost broke my back. It. Hang on to it. Hang, Hang on, on to it. Oh, no. oh! Oh! Good fish. Oh, yeah. Sounds big. All right, Houston just brought in probably a solid 46 pound female. When it comes to snagging spoonbill here in Oklahoma, you have to run barbless hooks. And so we run, I run 12 out hooks, sometimes 10, a little bit smaller ones, but. We run them with the barbless at state law, but what it does, it keeps this fish from getting tore up. Like it made one little incision in her, and that's all it did. You have to keep tension on them because they because it doesn't have a barb, it will come out when you're trying to reel them in. So we're gonna weigh this one for Houston and see what we got. Here we go. It's gonna show up on camera. 50 pounds. 51. Is it 51? It was bouncing between 50 and 51. Okay, this thing weighs four pounds. So, 46. Hey, you're or 46. Yeah. You said he was 46. almost spot on, wasn't he? Team effort. Good job. 46 pound fish. What do you think, Houston? I caught this one and I feel really good. You feel really good. <laughs> well, that's good. Did your sister help you reel that one in? Yeah. Yes. That's some great teamwork right there. Hey, I get some smiles over here. Great job, guys. All right. Let's get her back in the water. Ooh. She would be in a 
There she goes. Real. Keep it tight. Oh. There he is. Good job. Good job. Here, let me help get him over here so he can pull him in. I did good that time. I agree. Well, that's a good one. Hey, Houston. Huh? Tell them what we're doing with this fish. Uh, we are going. Well, first, it is a little small. But it's way bigger than a perch. But we are gonna keep it, catch, clean, and cook. So we gotta wait until the end. So what do I do with that? Put it on your fish. Oh. Oh, we're gonna slap it right on his forehead right there. <laughs> so with these spoonbill, each fish that's harvested has to be tagged with. The specific fisherman's name. Houston wanted to keep this fish. You're only allowed to keep one per day. So that's Houston's fish. Emily and I can still fish. Uh-huh. <laughs> you have to put it on the bill. Hold him up. Yeah, you gotta get okay. it in both hands. Hold him up, okay? Hey, you're the one driving the boat. You right. got it to hook right over the top of him. I know. It's still a fish. Still a fish. You got that right. Peeing. Peeing on your dad's phone. Fish, 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 fish. Hold the rod when it's like this. <laughs> there you go. What do you think there? Got hair in your mouth. This is fun. You like it? Uh huh. Got it? I grab it back here a little bit. It's gonna. <laughs> you got it? There you go. <laughs> Don't get woke, Emily. <laughs> You got spoonbill slime on your upper lip. I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have in your braces. I know. <laughs> good job, Emily. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> You're doing good. You're doing good. You're my life jacket. <laughs> See the difference in Houston and Emily. Houston's about going fishing and bringing home the meat to eat, huh? Mm -hmm. That's what you're all about. You go fishing, you want to catch every fish, keep it, take it home and cook it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to cook yours, aren't we? Yeah. We are on the fish now, catching doubles. Emily and I doubled up. Yeah. Emily's getting tired. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
Look at that. Catching them two at a time. Give me five, Emily. Give me your knuckles. Can I release one? No. <laughs> now. Too late now, probably. <laughs> Dive them into the water. I think we found something new that Emily likes to do. <laughs> we'll have to bring your mom up here one of these days, huh? Uh huh. Ooh. You oh, she's like, she like catching them. No, Emily. Emily, I don't know if it shows up on camera or not, but you are filthy. I know. <laughs> so I think we're going to call it good on the double right here. We doubled up, caught two really nice spoonbills. So you, might, you may hear us call them spoonbill or paddlefish. It's kind of two different names, same fish. But they're like a prehistoric dinosaur and they're a lot of fun to catch. This was Emily's first time to get to come. Mm -hmm. And she has slammed the fish. Even though Houston wanted to be tagged out on the second one, I think he was kind of regretting that decision because we fished for probably an hour or so. It, it took us a while to find the fish. Or took, well, it took Tommy a while to get Emily guided in yes. as the driver to find the fish. And once we found them, it was like we were hooked up within just a couple seconds. So if you're interested in coming doing something like this, we're in northeast Oklahoma. There's several lakes around here. These fish are in several of these lakes. And uh, Tommy is an excellent guy. He got a brand new boat this year. This is our third trip yes, with sir. Tommy, I think. My Houston came. We went a couple years ago with Dutch and uh, Dutch's brother and Taylor from Pure Living for Outdoors. And you know, we just have so much fun. And we've done it on the river. We're in the lake now. But I'll let Tommy tell you about his guide service. And uh, if you want to come do this in northeast Oklahoma, you, it's a lot of fun. You should try it out once in your lifetime, catching these giant, huge, awesome fish. Hey, guys. My name's Tom McDenham with T. McD's Guide Service. I specialize in paddlefish, but I do some crappie fishing as well and sand bass fishing. Um, give me a call sometime. Look me up on Facebook. The best way to get a hold of me Um T McD's Guide Service. It's T period M C D apostrophe S Guide Service. I like my page, share my page. I mean, Daniel and the kids, everybody is so awesome to come out. I mean, you can you can see as, as it's a family thing. It's not just like something for big guys. I mean, we get the children in here. I mean, we've had as young as five years old in here rolling up some solid fish, you know, 40, 50 pounders. I mean, we have to help them, of course, but and this year i went out and got a new boat and you know it's gonna like for the winter time fishing we're running a full enclosure i've got the best electronics i'm running two 12 inch garments on the here on the dash and then i run the live scope up front when we're wanting to crappie fish or go out and do what everybody's doing we're we're actually using a live scope to jig for the paddlefish to catch some of the bigger ones and actually target like certain fish if it's something you want to do look me up on facebook Find my number there, call me, and love to take you guys out. And I appreciate it. Appreciate these guys every year. Yeah, it's awesome. Ew! Mm. You just got on me. It'd be okay, I promise. Look at all that white. So we made it back home with our giant paddlefish fillets. We're gonna fry these things up tonight. So I let these fillets set in, in salt water for about two days. And I changed the water out a couple times a day. So the main thing with these paddlefish is you wanna get all of the fat and the red meat off of those big fillets. And they can actually be a very tasty fish. A lot of people don't eat them. But just keep in mind, paddlefish are very heavily regulated and the the populations are guided or uh, controlled very very uh, well in Oklahoma the wildlife department keeps a really close eye on these paddlefish so you're only allowed to harvest one per person and Houston was the only one that harvested one we just wanted to bring one home so we could fry it up and show you guys and tell you how it tastes so we're just gonna cook these outside on the patio I'm gonna slice these fillets up real thin and then we're gonna roll them in some of that Everglades fry mix and uh, cook us up some hash brown or some hush puppies and some tater tots, not hash browns. But uh, we're gonna enjoy a little fish fry with just the family tonight. So let's get to cooking. Is that the part that you need off for your. Well, that's a filet we're gonna eat. Just slice them nice and thin. Ooh, 
yummy. Hey, you have to wait on the fish, okay? Okay. Do my do my best. I'll go put some cheese on these bad boys. What about you guys? But I sure hate it getting dark at 5:30 or 6 o'clock because it is uh, currently 6:40 p.m. It's been dark for way too long. But so we got our fillets nice and battered up in that Everglades Everglades fry mix. Now I did slice these pretty thin, like you saw. We don't prefer big, thick chunks of fish around here. My wife especially loves thin fillets. So I just took those big paddlefish fillets and sliced them as thin as I could. And we're gonna fry them at about 350 degrees for probably, I don't know, a couple minutes until they float. Then we'll go just a little bit longer than that. We like them a little extra crispy. Got the peanut gallery out here looking for scraps. Bella, I haven't dropped any fish yet. Alrighty, got some floaters. These are gonna be good. I don't care what you say. Those are gonna be good. Now, it's very important to salt them a little bit when they first come out. Best results for sure. Keep frying away. Ooh, wee. Mm. Yep. We'll have to try that. Rule number one at any good fish fry is <laughs> the cook gets to eat fish as he cooks, right? Mm. So, paddlefish is a little bit different than most freshwater fish. It's a lot more dense. Some people would compare it to chicken. Um, I, I wouldn't compare it to a chicken, but it does have more of a white, um, stringy meat, and that's why I sliced it so thin, but it ain't bad. It ain't bad at all. Be curious to see what my wife thinks. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be any good? Yeah. I want to try first. Get in here! <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> you act like we have a teenager in the house. I know, right? Uh, I had an accident. Of course you did. I had an oopsie. I'm gonna go first. Let's try. Some more chicken leg. Oh. Mm. That's really good. You like it? It's really crisp. Really crisp. I cut them thin. I cut them extra thin. Mmm. Yummy. Now the real taste tester. The real one that's important. Doesn't taste paddlefishy at all. It's really? really? It's really good. What the? What, explain to me what paddlefishy is. Because I don't really know. I've only eaten one before and we cooked it at Dutch's house, so that doesn't really count. He's not a fish frying kind of guy. No. Mm, it's really good. It's not super flaky, but... No, like I said, that, that paddlefish meat's a lot more dense. Right. More but of a the... chicken consistency, but yes, not, near yeah, as, not as dense say. as chicken. It almost tastes like a, a really thin chicken strip. Not like a blue and gold chicken strip, but like... Like you know, McDonald's. Like... No, no. Don't insult chicken. my fish like that. No. Will still work. Y'all should have planned that in there. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, then you're done. 